Well, on today's episode of I Swear I'm Not a Hoarder, we try and figure out how many chainsaws I own. So the other day, somebody had to go and ask the question, how many chainsaws do you have? Now that's not something the average person really knows. I mean, who keeps track of how many pieces of equipment or vehicles you have? Machinery just grows like weeds, sprouts up out of the ground. I'm just a simple junk farmer, and I grow a rusty crop. Now I gotta make it clear, I don't collect chainsaws. I mean, you're not really a collector until you have like over a hundred. Uh, up until then, you're just a mild enthusiast. And here's another technicality. Chainsaws are a tool. And, you know, you need different tools for different jobs. And having bar spares and multiples and whatever, that's just being prepared. Time to go corral some chainsaws. Those have definitely been sitting for a minute or two. And at least it's got the preservation dust on it. Man, we are just digging deep into the archives. Some of these saws haven't seen the light of day for years. I mean, come on. I mean, do people actually really ever know how much stuff they have? Finding stuff you didn't know you own, that's the fun part. Well, that's just a little guy. That only counts for a half. They just keep popping up. I think this is one of those feral chainsaws that, you know, just breed in the wild. So my infallible memory is telling me that there's a chainsaw somewhere in this vicinity. I mean, random chainsaws are just a part of life. So we got things rounded up. Hopefully we got everything rounded up. I have a feeling I'm missing at least one, but, you know, you can't keep track of everything. And we'll start off with some of the ones I use most frequently. There's the old Promac 1010 down there with the 28 inch bar. It's been recently worked over, been ported, got a few other things done to it, and it's a pretty good runner. It's loud, and I generally only use it whenever you, uh, you know, need the longer bar. Now, I'm not going to lie and say I don't need any more chainsaws. I would really like to find a couple of larger displacement saws, you know, 100 plus cc's, but uh, for now, that's about the biggest diameter cut I'll take is with that. And then next we got the uh, little green Poland XXV and that's another recent addition but nice little light saw for lemon and stuff like that. And then we got this uh, Poolan. And I recently fixed this up to kind of be the loner saw and you know one that I don't care too much about but it's still a decent saw. As you can see both of these Polands have only the most premium of uh, bar covers. Next up is probably one of my favorite saws, the Steel 026. Uh, this is like my go-to for just cutting firewood, lemon, or basic maintenance. 16 inch bar. Uh, this one's actually been worked over. When I got it, it was kind of blown up. So, you know, why not port things out? So it's got the muffler job done to it. Uh, I worked the carb over a little bit. Good running saw, lightweight. Decent enough power. That's my usual go-to. Put a lot of hours in on those saws. And then there's that Echo twin cylinder. I break that out occasionally just to use it and keep it running. It's heavy though and you know doesn't rev up super high so it gets the job done but usually not the first saw you go to. <laughs> and then we've got this little guy. It's in pretty nice shape. Mainly just dusty. Hasn't ran in a few years but I'm sure it would go with, you know, a little bit of work. $10 home light number one, uh, the XL12. That's still one of my go-to trip saws. Throw that in the back of the truck. Don't worry about anybody stealing it for the most part. And uh, it's been a good saw. The second uh, $10 home light was this Super XL. And unfortunately, when I was running it uh, a couple years ago, the ignition went out in it. I guess this doesn't have the points and condensers, or there was something odd that usually the ignitions can go in these, so should have bought the parts saw, but it's temporarily out of commission. Next up are some of the old saws I've accumulated, like that old clipper. 
<laughs> never seen one of those before until I ended up buying it and can't remember what I paid exactly but I'm pretty sure I did not pay more than 20 bucks for any of these I mean this thing is just cool it's got everything exposed and actually did have it running at one point then we've got this old uh, Sears I believe and it was dirty when I got it but it cleaned up pretty nice now the cool thing about this is I believe it has a little Tecumseh motor in it kind of similar to the ones in my ice augers that I've worked over and this one also ran when parked then we've got the Monarch Silver King now this saw was probably the first one of the really antique saws that I picked up I got it off a guy and uh, I wasn't even really trying to buy a chainsaw but was BSing about other things and sure enough he had this he was thinking about getting rid of and I somehow ended up coming home with it as with most of my saws they are not mint but they're pretty much all there and functionally complete I did have this running at one point had to go through the little tillets and HL carburetor on there then there's the beast of a porter cable left-handed saw that thing is heavy awkward and doesn't get used very much that's for sure and then there's the old steel s10 economy saw it's in pretty nice shape just a little bit dusty and again it ran when parked and I'm sure she'd fire right off if we threw some fresh gas in it but again you just always go for something more convenient and uh, useful when you need to run it this was that one that actually doesn't even have a kill switch from the factory you have to shut it off with the choke I don't think that would pass safety standards today pretty sure this little craftsman got scrounged out of the scrap pile here we've got an, another old Sears craftsman not in bad shape saw I'm sure it would run but just hasn't made it on the hit list yet another steel 026 with really good compression might be missing a part or two but for 10 bucks the next few saws are definitely future projects this little pioneer here supposedly ran needs a little bit of TLC um, Oh boy, 16 to 1. That's a mosquito fogger. And uh, you gotta love the 1970s. They made fake wood paneling for everything, even chainsaws. But this thing's definitely seen some use, so I'm sure we'll get it going at some point. So this C5 was part of a package deal. I was, uh, you know, trying to work a deal with a friend buying some other sled parts, and sure enough, saw this sitting over in the corner. And he's like, oh yeah, I think we need to work that into the deal. And I was like, well, I really don't need any more chainsaws, you know, but we'll, we'll see, you know. And he's like, no, it's non-negotiable. He's like, you're taking that saw. So, I mean, I can't haggle with that deal. And then there's this thing. It's a, uh, I, I don't know what the heck that is. I, I knew at one point, and now I've forgotten. I'm blanking out man I can't remember what this is next up are a few basket cases now these still count because all the pieces are in there most of the pieces anyways there's an old home light that hasn't seen the light of day for years and then this this is what is this a skill really looks like an old pool in the me but this was in the shop a while ago and had the carburetor apart and one of the little springs in the carburetor launched into low orbit never to be seen again and just like that this saw was never to be seen again stored away in the back of the shop now this saw this saw it definitely needs a little bit of TLC I want to say 
came with another batch of miscellaneous parts and was just thrown in with the deal. Now in here we've got, you know, the mint condition Pro Mac 1010 that, uh, you know, doesn't see the light of day too often. And there's the old 029 that got converted into a chop saw. Worked good for a little while. And then I ended up chancing into a deal on that uh, brute. So this, this saw, man, this thing runs great. And it'll tear through pretty much anything. Yeah, I guess that one's not technically a chainsaw, but you can convert it over. Then there's the chainsaw powered air compressor. So, you know. That's still technically a chainsaw too. Now after all of that, I count 27 saws in total. Those are rookie numbers. But we have one more to go through. And we have saved the best for last. This right here is the cream of the crop. I never thought I'd actually own one of these things, but it has happened. Whole in wild thing. So like I said, I really don't collect chainsaws. I've just accumulated one or two and I really don't plan on buying any more until I buy some more. Did you think we could go a whole video without hearing one of these run? If I can remember where the kill switch is. Don't even ask about ice augers and outboard motors.